It's a parent's nightmare. Your seven-year-old is at a remote school camp, far from home. Fun and games supposed to be the order of the day, but something goes horribly wrong. Just try and relax for me, mate. Try and relax. Don't fight me. One minute your child is happy, healthy. The next minute, quite literally, he is at death's door. Fight. He developed shortness of breath. He got very anxious and agitated. And then his airway started to swell around his lips, his throat. And then his blood pressure dropped, and that's when he passed out. Uh, he was desperately ill. His heart had slowed down to 40 beats a minute, which is critically low in a small child. Uh, normally we'd expect it to be 150 a minute when in a sick child. In his case, he was about 30 seconds from an unrecoverable cardiac and respiratory arrest, 30 seconds from death. William has mild asthma throughout the day, already weakening his immune system. But the medical team recognises that the severity and speed of this life-threatening assault on his airways is not because of his asthma, but rather is the result of something seemingly benign, something he ate. An estimated 150 to 200 Americans die each year because of allergic reactions to food. Food allergies affect about 2% of adults and 4 to 8% of children in the United States. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, children with food allergies are more likely to have asthma, eczema, and other allergies. Studies have shown that the severity of food allergies can change throughout a person's life, and some can even be outgrown. There is no cure for food allergies. The best way to protect yourself is by avoiding any food that will cause a reaction. To reduce the risk from allergic reactions, FDA is working to ensure that major allergy-causing ingredients in food are labeled accurately. In addition, many manufacturers are voluntarily using advisory labels on products that might contain ingredients that cause allergic reactions due to cross-contact in the manufacturing process. A food intolerance is often confused with a food allergy. A food intolerance is the body's abnormal reaction to a food, but in a way that does not involve the immune system. Now, on the other hand, a food allergy is triggered by an immune response. And when comparing the two, a food allergy poses a much greater health risk than a food intolerance. My food allergies are um, peanuts, tomatoes, avocado, kiwi, banana, peanuts, eggs, shellfish, and strawberries. People don't realize how hard it really is to have so many allergies. Every year, up to 2,000 people in the U.S. and Canada die from anaphylaxis, a serious allergic reaction. The most common causes are allergies to peanuts, insect bites, and seafood. But not all anaphylactic reactions are severe. They can be mild, with subtler symptoms. And most people don't know that if you've had a mild reaction in the past, you're at risk of having a life-threatening one in the future. More from Mayo Clinic on a new anaphylaxis awareness campaign. John Lindy's reaction came on fast. I started to feel a little dizzy. It was becoming very, very difficult for me to breathe. John remembers reaching for the phone to call for help. When help arrived, he was in big trouble. I was uh, collapsed and unconscious on my kitchen floor, um, having turned a, a, a shade of blue. John's episode was likely triggered by peanuts. He's been allergic since childhood, but symptoms had always been mild. Nausea, hives, and flushing. So those who've had a mild allergic reaction to a food substance or an insect sting at one point can have an anaphylactic reaction unpredictably in the future. Dr. Wyatt Decker says anaphylaxis happens when your immune system identifies a substance such as peanuts as foreign. This triggers cells called mast cells to release chemicals that cause many symptoms, including dilated blood vessels, low blood pressure, flushing, constricted airways, intestinal problems, and even death. But an injection of epinephrine from an auto-injector can reverse symptoms and save your life. Pull off the cap and you hold it to your thigh and you inject it and then you hold it in there for 10 seconds. You should be aware of the symptoms that you may experience during a severe allergic reaction. These can include hives, swelling and itching, shortness of breath or chest tightness, cramps, 
nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, a sharp drop in blood pressure, and if you don't act quickly enough, you could even lose consciousness. Epinephrine by injection is the treatment of choice for anaphylactic reactions because it quickly begins working to constrict blood vessels, relax muscles in the lungs to improve breathing, stimulate the heartbeat, and reverse hives and swelling around the face and lips. Your EpiPen contains a single, pre-measured dose of epinephrine. Using your EpiPen is easy. First, remove it from the plastic tube. Grasp the unit with your dominant hand. Your thumb should be closest to the end with the gray safety release cap, but not over the cap. Then use your other hand to remove the safety release cap. Once the cap is removed, be sure not to touch the black tip at the other end of the EpiPen. This is where the needle comes out. Hold the EpiPen with the black tip toward your outer thigh. Now, swing and jab the EpiPen firmly at a 90-degree angle into your thigh. Your EpiPen is spring-loaded and is designed to be used through clothing. Keep the EpiPen firmly against your thigh for approximately 10 seconds. Then, remove the EpiPen and massage the injection site for another 10 seconds. Check the small clear window on the side of the EpiPen. If you see the red plunger in the window, it means that the epinephrine has been injected. Also, look to see if the needle is coming out of the black tip. Next, take your used EpiPen and without bending the needle, carefully put it back into its plastic carrying tube, needle end first. Then screw the cap on completely. This will automatically lock the EpiPen into the tube for safety. It's important to remember that once you've used your EpiPen, you must seek medical attention. Call 911 immediately or have someone else take you to an emergency room as soon as possible. This is crucial because after 15 to 20 minutes, the effects of epinephrine begin to wear off. Remember to take your used EpiPen with you to the hospital.